Voting is important. Voting establishes our political foundation. Elections give us a chance to make our voice heard. I have voted in almost every election since I was eligible when I turned 18 years old, and I will continue to do so because I believe it is my right and my responsibility. Today I will attempt to persuade you to vote by discussing the fact that it is your right, it is your responsibility, and that every vote does count. First of all, it is your right. When this, when this nation began, the ability to vote was given primarily to and exclusively to white men who were landowners. That accounted for about 6% of the population of the United States. That's not very much, okay? So as years went by, it was changed a little bit to include white men who did not own land, but it was still exclusive to white men only. The 15th Amendment was finally passed, allowing men of color and of different races to vote, and it was against discrimination based on race, color, or previous condition of servitude. However, many black men still did not vote because largely many of them were intimidated and did not find their way to the polls. Okay? Women were still excluded from the voting process. So women's suffrage movements began to spring up here and there, and women's movements began fighting for the woman's right the woman's right to vote. So the 19th Amendment was finally passed in the summer of 1920, allowing for white women to vote. Okay? So black men were black women were still excluded. And as civil rights movements began to start across the United States, we started seeing a lot of fight for the right of black women to also vote. Um, the, the Voting Act of 1965 was passed, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, and this allowed for all U.S. citizens, regardless of race, color, previous condition of servitude, over the age of 21 to vote in the voting process in the United States. A few years later, we found ourselves at war, and we were sending off young men, 18 years old, to the battlefield. And the question arose, why do we expect them to fight for their country when they cannot even, even vote in their country? So in 1971, the 26th Amendment was passed, allowing for those 18 and over to vote in the United States unless they had committed a felony. And that's where we are in regards to voting rights now today still. Um, in the video, The Fight for the Right to Vote in the United States by Nick Beeman Griffin, published November 5, 2013, uh, Griffin discusses many of the things that I was just discussing, the different amendments and when we were allowed to vote at certain points, who was allowed to vote. And this last little segment's really good. We're going to watch a one-minute segment of Griffin's video. Many wondered whether it was fair to send men who couldn't vote to war. In 1971, the 26th Amendment to the Constitution made all citizens 18 and older eligible to vote the last major expansion of voting rights in the United States. Today, the pool of eligible voters in the U.S. is far broader and more inclusive than ever before in U.S. history, but of course, it's not perfect. There are still active efforts to suppress some groups from voting, and only about 60% of those who can vote do. Now that you know all the hard work that went into securing the right to vote, what do you think? Do enough citizens have the right to vote now? And among those who can vote, why don't more of them do it? So as you saw in Mr. Griffin's video, there were a lot of things that went into giving us our right to vote. And because of that right, we should take part in the process. Now that I've discussed with you your right to vote, I'm going to talk to you about your responsibility to vote. In the importance of voting, should every citizen vote, written November 16, 2017, Everett Vasquez said, it is the right, benefit, and obligation. He also said, votes can shape remote financial and social arrangements. 
it is our responsibility to vote. Even if we don't see the immediate effect of that voting, we have a right, we have a benefit, and we have an obligation to be a part of the process. If you don't vote, you don't have a right to gripe. If you have an issue with something, your civil responsibility is to vote. And if you vote, then you have a right to voice your opinion. A vote can equal change or a vote can oppose change. You see things happening in your community that you want to go a different direction, then do your civil responsibility, get out and vote. Do you see things in your community that you don't want to change? And get out and vote. Who you elect to office, the bills you pass, the uh, different amendments, the different things that you vote on, propositions that you vote on in an election, they have a big, a big say in what changes and what does not change in your community, in your state, and in your nation. We also have a responsibility to the issues in our nation. We have a responsibility to vote because of the issues. Abortion immigration, the oil and gas industry, military funding. All of these things are important issues and we must take our responsibility as civilians and citizens of this great nation to vote to make sure the right choices are made on these hot topic issues. American women's suffrage came down to one man's vote is an article written by Sarah Pruitt on thehistory.com and it was written August 24th, 2018 regarding the 19th Amendment. Sarah Pruitt states, after a dramatic showdown in the state legislature, the Tennessee House voted by the narrowest margin to pass the amendment. She was discussing the 19th Amendment, the right for women to vote. And it came down to the vote of one man named Frederick Douglass. There are many other instances in history where something came down to one vote, one voice, one electoral college vote. It just depends. Okay? The Berrien publishers. In their June 5, 2020 report, um, the importance of one vote, we find one vote cost King Charles I of England his head. The vote was 67 to 68. So by one person, the axe came down on his head. The American people were given the English language instead of the German language by one vote. Thomas Jefferson was elected third president of the United States by one vote. In 1845, Texas was admitted into the Union as a state by one man's vote, a man named Edward A. Hannigan of Indiana. So I've discussed with you the importance of voting based on your right to vote, your responsibility to vote, and the fact that one vote matters, every vote matters. Get out and vote. Vote responsibly, responsibly. Vote informed. Inform yourself and vote. After all, it may be your vote that makes the difference. It may be your vote that secures our life, liberty, and pursuit.